A new book gives us a front row seat to the rise of social media giants that shape so much of our modern world. Special Characters, My Adventures with Tech's Titans and Misfits is a memoir by our former colleague Lori Siegel. She was a correspondent for 60 Minutes Plus and a CNN senior tech reporter. Lori watched as high profile tech names like Twitter, Facebook and Uber went from startups to some of the world's biggest companies. Lori Siegel is also the founder and CEO of Dot 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 Media. Laura, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Good to be here with you guys. All right. So your career is far from over. Um, <laughs> but what inspired you to write this memoir? You know, I just, I had a front row seat to history. I started out putting on these, I call them misfits, these <laughs> out-of-the-box entrepreneurs when there were just a couple people at the company, the Instagram founders. There must have been four people when I put them on right. camera. I was trying to convince people that, you guys, we got to put them on camera. They're going to be something. And then I watched as they transformed society. And by the way, things got super complicated too. Um, and I wanted to document it. It felt important to document it. And your life is tied into it. It's not yeah. just them. You had to mix the two. Right. It was my, and it was also a coming of age story for me. We were all the same age. We all grew up. We were all at the same places together. I just remember there's a, a bar downtown in New York City where people would just drink beer and kind of jam on these ideas. That ended up transforming the world. Um, and so I knew a lot of them when they still had the baby faces, right? <laughs> right? And so um, my, my story is very intertwined with the story of tech. I remember this one moment when I was playing in the NFL and this company comes in to talk to the team. They say, hey, listen, you guys don't have to drink and drive. We have this concept. Um, if you're out anywhere, we'll pick up your car. We'll even pick you up and take you right. home. And they hand out this business card. And I'm like, Ub oop, Ub 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 right. this will never work. Nobody's right. just going to get into a stranger's yeah, car. Yeah, well, a weird idea. That was it. But it worked, though. You were around some of these companies, some of these men and women, yeah. before they made it big, when it was just the inception of yeah. the idea, what made you cover them in the way that you did? You know, I was always interested in the human part of, of technology, even before we started talking about misinformation, how technology could impact politics. I was always interested in the ethics of it um, and why it mattered. And we were coming out of the recession, right? I, I don't want to age myself, but we were coming <laughs> out of the ladder earlier. Right? We were coming out of the recession. <laughs> there was the iPhone had come out, the App Store had launched. And there was this group of creative misfits. So you could have an idea and you could code it into the hands of millions of people. And that was the start of it. And for me, I always liked a little punk rock when I was younger. And so these, these folks, these entrepreneurs, like they just didn't do things because you had to do things, right? They wanted to shape society in a different way. So I really loved that. Now, of course, when I got older, when a lot of these companies matured, things got super complicated. I remember, um, not to spill a little tea, but I remember interviewing um, the former CEO of, uh, of Uber, Travis Kalanick, mm. and the company had had many issues with women's safety in the car. And they were in here to talk about, they were in front of me to talk about a partnership. And I remember asking him that question of what are you guys doing? Because they had grown very fast or billion dollar valuation. I said, what are you doing to help women's safety? And he almost took out the mic and he said, I didn't know this was that kind of interview. Mm. As in, they didn't have to be accountable mm. for these types of things. And I noticed a switch happen. And so it's super interesting to me. You also, when you wrote about that, that was one of the interesting things that I remember reading about. And also, uh, death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. And the sexism in the industry. Yeah. You know, I had a, a money manager for a venture capitalist tell me that I didn't talk about my personal life enough and that he could create a narrative around me. He was, I think he'd been drinking. And I just, I was younger and I, I wish I had, sometimes I said, I wish I had said more, you know, but it, I channeled that into a lot of the stories I told. You know, I did um, a whole series on non-consensual um, pornography, on, on revenge, revenge porn, porn yeah. right, at the time. And, it, you know, it was this new type of harassment uh, that was all about power and control, mainly against women. And so I channeled it into some of the stories, but I do think you know, with the Me Too movement, we, we've talked a lot about sexism. And the thing that I still want to talk about, I think it's hard to talk about, is the stuff that you can't really define. It's the death by a thousand cuts, mm -hmm. right? A little backhanded, little slight. Yeah, and it, little... and it eventually yeah. adds up. And I, I saw that in, in tech, and um, I saw that in every aspect. And we, we, I want to get back to um, Travis Kalanick. A spokesperson did say that they have no comment on that interaction. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking on just the tech idea and how these young men and women, they think they have something, yeah. but then they go and get it. As you're creating this memoir, um, yeah. what would be your advice to people that feel like they have an idea? Because 
All of us at one point thought right. we had something genius we were holding. <laughs> right, what right. Is the, what is separates we these folks? You know, A, resilience. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to accept no. There is no founder I interviewed that didn't have failure. Mm. You know, the, one of the big themes in, in here is about lobster moments. Um, it's, I, I like to, I'm gonna coin this phrase, lobster moments. I'd become obsessed with this YouTube video of a rabbi talking about how lobsters grow. And the only way for lobsters to grow is they have to completely shed their shell. But it's a super vulnerable moment and it's really stressful. And growth and changing yourself and trying to take a risk is really hard and maybe we don't talk about that. And I think, you know, I think part of this book was about my lobster moment and mm -hmm. leaving a kind of fancy job and deciding to go do my own company, yeah. having interviewed all these people, but all these folks who have changed the world, some for better, some for worse, or you could argue, had lobster moments and, and took that risk, um, and it was uncomfortable and weird, yeah. and we just don't talk about that. And you're enough. changing the world. Don't be oh, you guys are too nice. And you're just getting started. Oh, you guys Lori are Lori Siegel, nice. thank you so much. Thank you. Special Characters is thank on you. sale now. We'll be right back.